Hello, my name is Sip Mendez. Welcome to Sip's Wood Chips. And uh, for today's project, I wanted to make something to open <coughs> bottles of beer. And we've been buying more beer lately from Mexico and also from Germany and uh, beer from uh, microbreweries. And these bottles tend to have um, traditional uh, uh, tops on them. And you can't just twist the caps off. So you, it requires a bottle opener. So I, I've been going to thrift stores and uh, when I do my thrift store shopping I've seen these laying around. And these are wine bottle openers. And I don't have much use for these. Most wine I buy either has a screw off top or comes in a box. But what they do have is this part up here. And this part uh, it makes an excellent um, bottle opener. And as far as corkscrews are concerned, this part here, uh, I can also use it for a kit. I don't buy very many kits because they are quite expensive. A kit for a uh, bottle opener, which is mostly this part here, they run anywhere from five to eight dollars, maybe nine dollars. And so I paid 50 cents for these. And uh, then I can make a bottle opener and I can also make a corkscrew. So this is the one I made and I made it out of a piece of uh, mesquite. It includes a lot of the uh, sap wood. And I'm going to show you how to make this. And before you start any project, make sure you read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with your power tools and equipment. Would work and it's fun but it's important to work safely. This is just a block of wood with the hole drilled into the end grain and these pins I found out are just pressed in there. They're not screwed in there, they're not riveted and so you can just uh, place them over the hole and tap them and they come right out. They're not in there very tight at all. And there's that. So I'm just going to take this and put it in the vise. And I want to catch these three and not mar up the, the chrome piece there. I think that should be all right. And then with the hexaw, I'm just going to cut cut this off. So here's my two pieces. Now I have two kits. I can make a bottle opener kit, and I can make a uh, corkscrew kit. And I'll take a file and file off the any burrs just so I won't cut myself. I doubt if I'll ever use these for anything, but they do they are like little handles. I'll hold on to them for a while. This I probably won't be able to use, but again just hold on to it for a little while. These little pins, same thing. And uh, this Let's see, I need to grab my calipers and measure here. Looks like 11 and a half millimeters and they're a little bit less than a half inch. They're about three, three eighths of an inch. So when I make my handle, I will go ahead and drill a, a three eighths hole and push that in there and uh, eat with the epoxy and that'll work great. I do have a um, a ferrule here that I made from a from a copper coupling and I can use that to reinforce the the neck on my handle. So I have this rather ugly piece of wood here and uh, it's mesquite 
and uh, I'll try to make my handle out of it and maybe I can leave some of the uh, natural edge and um, let's see I'll try it like this I drilled some little guide holes in the bottom it's going to be quite off balance at the beginning but uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem And I'm spinning at 500 RPMs. So the first thing I'm going to do is get, get rid of these extreme points. And see what it looks like. It's definitely out of balance, but I can, uh, compared to the weight of the lathe, it's not going to be a problem. up to uh, 650. but not bad. I can probably move it up to about 8.50 now. So I'm hoping to keep some of this ugly wood in here, but uh, maybe a little bit too large yet. I need to do is um, size this down to fit this ferrule, which I made from a uh, copper uh, coupling. And the inside diameter on that coupling is 7 eighths of an inch, which is about uh, 23 uh, millimeters. So I'll get a parting tool. 
So I'm going to get my uh, bedan ready. And I can take it down quite a bit more with just uh, the gouge. Let me do that. Of the old tricks on, on doing these things is to uh, just rub the edge of your coupling so you know where where it's going to be. And I can take that down with just a uh, regular parting tool. And I'm going to go down an extra eighth of an inch or so this way. Make it an extra quarter. things a little bit large because I can always take off more of it. But bedans can be used two different ways. You can use it this way, which I see some people do, but I think the proper way is actually this way. to get a really good fit is to um, taper this end just slightly then loosen the headstock and rub the uh, ferrule and that'll tell you exactly where how the diameter you need and so I really just need to take off just a little bit more and when, th when I when that when I'm down to that level that should be about right widens slightly and that's good because as it as I drive it in it'll uh, fit even snugger more snug okay the colors in this look good um, 
for now my hand is this this size here and um, that means I, I can uh, make a grip I think my grip is actually going to be somewhere in here and the actual end will be probably over here okay so I'm going to make a shape here a bead of some sort and then uh, make a cove, a long wide cove in here and then taper it to this point out here very rough but that's that's about what I want and this wood looks nice uh, and when I get down a little bit deeper more of the cracks will go away and, and uh, look should look pretty good my round nose a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sand that offline for a minute and um, and part it off. Okay, I have some. I've sanded it with uh, 100, 150, and 220, and I'm going to give it a coat of lacquer-based uh, sanding sealer and uh, see what it looks like. Oh, that really brings out the colors, and that will keep it the bark that's still on there from flaking off. And uh, the sanding sealer dries really pretty good and so it, it's, it's not uh, really a problem on the, the tools. They're too scooey. And I'll go ahead and um, close that up. Go ahead and remove the excess. Okay. So I'll let that dry. 
The handle for my bottle opener has been drying for about an hour or so. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and, and attach the, um, the ferrule. Go ahead and remove it from the lathe. And um, I'm going to put this edge up. And it is a tight fit, so to get it to seat all the way, we'll go ahead and put this other one on top. That should take care of it. It's completely seated down now. And um, go ahead and part that off, and then we'll bore this. So now I need to trim off um, this excess here. And I'm trimming most of it off because I'm going to go ahead and drill it anyhow. I will saw. I'll saw off because I need to drill through there. Okay, now I'm going to go over to the drill press and we'll um, drill that in about an inch. So I have my uh, depth stop set. I'm going to drill this down, I'm going to drill this down about one inch. should be fine. So I have my handle here. I went ahead and took some um, steel wool and buffed this um, the ferrule. I'll give it a coat of lacquer or finish later and um, it'll look really nice. I mixed up uh, some of my epoxy here. And I mixed up two of them, two little dots because it may take quite a quite a bit to fill it because of the big gaps between the rings on the, uh, the shank of the bottle opener. Don't want it to come loose. And put something here on the shank. I uh, had to, had to I, took, I took a file and filed down some of the, the rings here because they were a little bit larger than 3 8 and they weren't, they weren't very round or smooth. So, either way, they should lock it in there pretty good. I'll go ahead and put the, spread the rest of this in. Put a thin film of epoxy here on the lid, on the top part, so I won't have to sand it as much. Oh, that looks like a good fit. Good. Okay. Let me get a napkin. Here I got a piece of cloth here. I'll wipe off the excess. It's always better to have a little extra than not enough. And that should be that should be real good. And I'll just cut that off on the bandsaw and sand it. Well, here's my finished bottle opener. I think it turned out quite nice. I really like the grain and the color in the wood. This is a piece of mesquite, and um, you can see a lot of the sap wood, and you can see the, the heart wood in here. And these, these areas here that are distressed really bring out the character. 
So if you've enjoyed this video, click on like. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. If you're not a member of YouTube, sign up for an account. It's quick, it's easy. You can leave comments, ask questions, get answers. So until next time, take care.